Welcome to Electrified, it's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patron, Cam. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. Pretty awesome tweet from Tesla's head of IR. Over the past few weeks, I've been speaking to some of the largest retail holders of Tesla, listening to stories of how they became shareholders many years ago. I gotta say, many conversations left me speechless. This community is another level. Just look around at all of the YouTube channels and Twitter accounts talking about Tesla. What other company has a following like that? Maybe Apple is the first one that would come to mind, but outside of that, no other companies really have such an engaged following. Gary Black raised his Tesla stock price target to 1600 up from 1400 citing mainly lower interest rate expectations over the next four years. He was expecting the 10-year to be around 3.5%, but now he's expecting 3%, and with lower interest rates, it's a lower rate that you're actually using to discount those future cash flows. In case you've been looking, at least at time of recording, the mobile connector is currently back in stock linked below. I tell you what, some of these analysts just love to see their writings published because one like this talking about the potential new ED tax credits being a significant tailwind, obviously, but then actually providing no value. Mark goes over the highest level detail possible, and then he says it's unclear to what extent the bill would expand EV unit volume in the United States. Thanks for your analysis, Mark. Good news for the Australian market as some of the first Model Ys built in Giga Shanghai are now arriving in Australia. Comes at a great time as the used Tesla market in Australia has been very hot. So far, it seems to be only the five seat variants and only the rear wheel drive versions. No performance Model Ys available in Australia just yet. Tesla has announced a pretty big update with the latest generation of the wall connectors. Now you are going to be able to charge customers to use these wall connectors with a few clauses, but this new feature should have a very significant impact on overall destination charging availability. A friend of Elon on Twitter shared this image of an app update that had this, charge your non-Tesla. And here was one more screenshot with this new option. This right here is the official Tesla form you would have to fill out. It says to qualify for listing on Tesla's Find Us map, and trip planner, Tesla expects hosts to have regular business hours, full-time employees, and positive internet reviews. And the stipulations for this new commercial service can be enabled on Gen 3 Tesla wall connectors that are connected to either Wi-Fi or cellular and have signed services agreements with Tesla. A minimum of six units are required to be installed to be considered for this service. Essentially now, property managers can actually charge customers if they have at least six of these wall chargers installed for the electricity they're providing. There will also be a manager portal where they can see analytics in all kinds of different data. If these initial reports that this new feature would not be limited to only Tesla vehicles, but it would be for all EVs, that would of course be a big deal as it's a greater incentive for the these property managers to buy more of these wall connectors and have them installed at different locations. Ryan said that he tried this out and he just scanned a QR code with the mobile app. However, he didn't have reception in this case because it was an underground parking garage. This was one of the first locations where this new feature was actually spotted. Six wall connectors, the charging price, then you just plug in and then ultimately scan that QR code. For some of these property owners, think about all of the opportunity. Now they'll have a way to charge both Tesla and non-Tesla customers to maybe actually earn a little profit from offering EV charging. Parking garages, hotels, apartment complexes, restaurants, offices, shopping malls, hospitals, etc. This new service is definitely going to increase the adoption of these wall chargers because it's that extra incentive of a little bit of profit opportunity for these business owners. Now, yes, over time, this will probably lead to less free destination charging, but at the same time, this will all feed into the feedback loop of more EV chargers being available, more people seeing them in the public, and ultimately being exposed to Tesla. So what do you guys think? I personally think this is an awesome move by Tesla and hopefully in the coming weeks we get some video of the user interface and we can see how this is actually working. So we know that Elon is committed to giving back to the future and we get a pretty good example of him doing just that.
a technical school training program has partnered with Tesla to train future service technicians. Lincoln Educational Services has linked up with Tesla and a Tesla training facility will be established in Denver, Colorado campus, part of a three-year plan where the school will provide Tesla's start training that's being held elsewhere as well at no cost to students to help develop the next generation of Tesla's service techs. The CEO said having Tesla's backing and input in developing these programs will be invaluable for our organization and for our students. Tesla will provide vehicles, tools, equipment, charging stations, and its own instructors to deliver the program. When students complete the program, graduates may be recruited for positions at Tesla service centers across North America. This makes Lincoln Tech one of only 10 programs across the country to offer the Tesla Start program. A very fun part of having a YouTube channel is getting to try many different products and services. Now, there are many more that you guys will never see, but the ones that make it to the channel are the ones that I now use and really enjoy. Shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Exter, for sending me one of the world's slimmest and smartest wallets. Have you ever misplaced your wallet and got that sinking feeling? Well, never again with Exter thanks to this solar powered tracking device that pairs with your phone. It notifies you if you're separated from your wallet and you can actually ring this device with your phone and you can ring your phone with this device. You can charge this in the sun for two hours and get three months of charge. If you're worried about wireless theft, Exter has built-in RFID blocking, so worry no more. My favorite part of this wallet though, the quick access card feature. It fans your cards perfectly every time for quick and easy access. Even if you only have one card, it will not fall out. Exter has many different options, styles, and colors to choose from, including wallets with a built-in holder for Apple AirTags. So if you use my link in the description below, you will get an additional discount on top of the ongoing 20% off summer sale going on right now. So go check it out for yourself. I'm glad that I did. So can somebody please tell me what in the world is going on here? I thought this was fake all morning, but apparently this seems to be real. This channel, the Tesla Welt podcast, was reporting on site from this EV charging hub in Germany. Now, he's saying that Tesla is building this Tesla pool. This is not a pool, okay? This is a dumpster full of water. There doesn't seem to be any circulation. I mean, I guess there could be circulation in here somewhere that I'm missing, but either way, a public pool with no supervision out in the wild. Over time, this just seems like a weird idea at the very best. I mean, look, if you're going to have an in-ground pool or something like that where you can go for 20 to 30 minutes and hang out on a hot day, that's awesome. But for me, I have zero interest in going to sit in a dumpster full of water. Seriously though, I am genuinely confused with this. Is this some sort of prank or marketing scheme? Tesla can't actually be doing this on its own initiative, right? So please, will you guys tell me what in the world is going on here? Am I missing something with this? I mean, hey, maybe Elon's doing this for the short sellers that are definitely suffering right now. Moving on, Tesla has added yet another notch in its vertical integration belt as it's now developing its own software for tracking its recruiting talent. When it comes to tracking job applicants, most companies will rely on third-party software like SAP or Oracle. But now Tesla has its own proprietary software to do just this, which will hopefully over time lower hiring costs. And I'm also confident that with time, this will give Tesla more granular, accurate, relevant data to help it in its hiring efforts. This news is coming from three current and former recruiting employees. Green the Only says, crack data for everyone. More steps in the right direction by Tesla to support repairs by third parties, and this is good for DIYers as well. This crack data is also commonly known as alert payloads. So with this now being added into the service mode, you're also able to see these signals that accompany each alert with regard to Tesla service. 
So far, there is mixed reporting for what vehicles this is currently available on. At the very least though, it looks like it's on the S and X and the 3 and Y would be added in the future if it's not on the 3 and Y already. Essentially, now Tesla customers will have access to this data that Tesla's support staff has been using to determine the root cause of many different issues with Tesla's. So if you pair this with the fact that Tesla service manuals are now available for free online with a ton of data, this is great for allowing more people to be able to understand and fix Teslas. More third-party options for repair over time will lead to more competition and lower prices to get things done. In case you're wondering why Uber is up almost 18% so far today, in quarter two, it reported positive free cash flow to the tune of $382 million. So the notion that Uber will never be self-sustaining is maybe a thing of the past. Now, free cash flow is not the same as profitability. No, Uber is not profitable yet. They're still losing a significant amount of money. However, being able to generate free cash flow when historically they've been negative in this category is definitely a step in the right direction, but still many problems to overcome. Some of those problems have been retaining good drivers and some of the investments that Uber has made into self-driving companies that have basically been losing them money. If there was an award for the worst role out of an electric vehicle, I think the Toyota BZ4X would take the crown. This is a screenshot from a letter from Toyota to a customer with regard to the recent recalls. One of the highlights, Toyota says, we continue to ask that you not allow the vehicle to be driven until a remedy is available. Basically, Toyota is offering this whole list right here of different compensation for affected customers, but look at this. Alternatively, if you do not wish to proceed as described above, Toyota will offer to repurchase your vehicle. Now, I promise you guys, I'm not vindictive. I don't root for people to lose. However, at some point, you have to sleep in the bed that you make. And Toyota, this is what you get for dragging your feet and not taking EVs seriously. And to throw some salt on those wounds, a company Toyota has a 50% ownership stake in has been falsifying emissions data for basically 20 years. All you need to know, this company, Hino Motors, which makes trucks and buses, the company had put quality compliance and talented development on the back burner as it sought to expand its scale in volume starting around 2000. Due to this, numerical targets like product development schedules and fuel efficiency were prioritized over working according to proper processes. This news is a little odd considering this estimated $4 billion supply deal for VW from this LiDAR maker InnoViz this company as of today was only worth around $600 million. Now it signed a $4 billion supply agreement. Either way, Indivis is set to provide hardware and software to Volkswagen's Carryad. Remember, Carryad is supposed to be Volkswagen's custom software division. Now it's apparently outsourcing at least some level of software. This deal is set to be for multiple brands in the VW group starting mid-decade. Here it is, Indivis Technologies up around 22% so far today, but the market cap still sits around 600 million. My biggest takeaway from this news though is that VW seems to be in complete disarray, especially when it comes to software. Dealing with a new CEO and Porsche's IPO and figuring out all of this new technology across multiple different brands, it's just a position I would not want to have to sort through. Just some quick all electric registration data for the first half of this year. Tesla in the number one spot globally, no surprise, with a 19% share, followed by BYD and Hyundai actually making the fifth spot. Of that top five full BEV automakers for the first half of this year, they make up a 53% share of the full BEV market. The others make up about 1.4 million not on the list for a total of around 3 million full BEVs registered the first half of this year. No surprises here, but Rivian is upset about the proposed legislation for the EV tax credit because they would be left out since it's over $80,000 for a Rivian truck. I do think it's very unfair though to say that a car that's $75,000 gets the credit, but one that's $82,000 is somehow not eligible. It really should be on a sliding scale. Honestly, the more I've thought about it, I don't think EV tax credits are a great option for America right now. I think there are better ways to spend this money. That said, if we are going to implement it, let's do our best to implement it in the best way possible. Possible. I know the argument goes, if somebody can afford an $85,000 EV, they don't need an EV tax credit. I agree. 
I'm just saying, as it stands, we're going to be giving tax credits to somebody paying $75,000 for an EV, but nothing for somebody paying 81,000. It doesn't make sense. Last up, Chevy is refunding up to $6,000 to Bolt owners who bought before the company lowered prices on the Bolt, but in return, these customers have to agree to not sue the company. Jalopnik actually reached out to a lawyer to have them interpret this release from Chevy, and he said, instead of thinking of this as a rebate, think of it as a legal release, a document settling a legal claim against GM. Although these owners may not have raised legal claims, they're giving up their right to do so in exchange for the rebate. I don't think we need to cover too much more than that, but this article will be linked below if you want to learn more. Don't forget to check out Exter and take advantage of that additional discount linked below. Please like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.